Thank you so much for tuning into the third segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. I apologize for that longer than usual wait. It's just, you know, the pictures. I mean, it's graduation pictures, and they, they also host a podcast um, of their own. And I really didn't feel like it would really be unfair to sort of impose on them in that nature. And it really, it was only a few minutes and it got them out quickly. So I apologize for the longer than normal wait. Let's go right into the third segment, which is going to be talking about the comments on what Austin Rivers had to say about um, NBA players and NFL players. So the quote is, I can take 30 players right now in the NBA, throw them in the NFL, you cannot take 30 NFL players and put them in the NBA. So that was, that was his quote. And the second half of that statement where he says you cannot take 30 NFL players and put them in the NBA, that is 100% true. You cannot take 30 NFL players and put, that in, and put them in the NBA. Why? Height difference. There is a huge height difference in NBA players compared to NFL players and literally everybody else. And literally, like, the biggest difference is just that height. I mean, Steph Curry makes George Kittle look like a, look like a toddler. And George Kittle is, like, on the football field, he looks huge compared to everybody else. But, like, around Steph, he just looks like a normal person. And... That second half of that statement, I think that's 100% true. You cannot take 30 NFL players and put them in the NBA because there's a lot of there's a lot of back and forth, there's a lot of running back and forth and there's in the NFL like there is a lot of running. I'm not saying that there isn't, but there isn't like huge pauses in in that running. Well, there's huge pauses in the running, excuse me. But in the NBA, it's like you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth every single time. And you really need to have good lungs for that kind of thing. And you can't really sit a player you can't really sit a player out um, as the game continues until like the play is dead. And where in football, it's like you can get you can if you're tired on one down, you can go ahead and rest for like two downs and then come back in and go in for the fourth down, and let's say you need to convert, like, um, a fourth and one, you can go in for that. So, in terms of the, like, the stamina that it takes for the NBA, I, well, I, like, it's going to be odd for them to adjust. I do think they'll still be able to adjust, because these athletes are still top-tier athletes at the end of the day, and they also, a lot of them also do track and field to make sure that, um, like, growing up as, like, their in college and in high school, a lot of a lot of football players they do track and field over when the football season is over, just to make sure that they're in shape and to make sure that they still have that good cardio going. And I really think that st- stamina wouldn't be that much of an issue when looking into that. But actually, you know what? Let me go ahead and bring up uh, JJ Watt's uh, response to uh, to Austin on on Twitter. So he tweeted. You don't have a job in either right now. Go ahead and try it. And obviously, if that isn't one of the most fire comebacks you've ever heard in your life, I don't know what is because that was quick to the point. I mean, obviously, no NFL athlete is going to tolerate those kind, that kind of level of disrespect. But, I mean, there is some kind of truth to his statement. I've seen clips of NBA of NBA athletes making football plays look like child's play. And not to mention the NBA players, since they have good cardio and since they are able to run, since they are used to running and things of that nature, like positions like the wide receiver, linebacker, and like safety, and like all those other skill positions, kick return, things of that nature, that would be such a, that would be perfect for, um, especially like wide receiver, like wide receiver or tight end would be a perfect position for a lot of NBA players right now. And another thing to take note of is how big the NFL roster, like NFL rosters actually are. So NFL rosters, they contain a lot of players. And among those players, like some of them don't even get any snaps. 
you can't tell me that um not an NBA athlete can even make make it to one of those spots on the team. Like there's a lot of slots available compared to like in the NBA where there's only like a very few spots available. And on top of that, again, height difference. I mean, all the um there's a huge height difference with um the with the NBA and the NFL. So if let's say just got let me think of um someone let me think let me think uh someone who's fast and someone who's it's really difficult to come up with a really good because like I'm used to seeing them play basketball and I'm trying to think how they would translate on an NFL on an NFL field obviously like I don't want to give Le- I don't want to say LeBron because we all know that LeBron has a history of playing football in high school so I don't want to I don't really want to say that because it's kind of a little bit unfair but I do think that someone like DeMar DeRozan, I think he would be a very good option at wide receiver. Somebody like, um, uh, and LeBron obviously would be a pretty good tight end. I mean, the only real position that I don't think NBA players can play is linemen. And that's because, like, linemen, they're usually, like, really, really big. And a lot of the NBA players are in shape. They aren't, like, I mean... The only NBA player that I could think of is Shaq that could play um that could play lineman with ease. And even then, I don't even think he'd be able to do that because and now I'm trying really really hard right now to give credit to both sides because I don't want to definitively say, I don't think that like NBA players can just you take them, boom, put them in the NFL, they're going to be good. That's not what I'm saying. Obviously, completely different sport, completely different rules, have to get used to it. I mean, Michael Jordan, like, they ever got plastered into baseball, and he wasn't as good in baseball, so there's no real telling. And I, it's just, I'm talking from more of a technical standpoint. When you look at their heights, and if you give them the NFL training that all of these other players are given... I think they will be able to succeed. I mean, honestly, imagine having Victor at imagine having Victor at small forward. Not 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 small forward. Imagine having Victor at wide receiver. Like he would and catching the ball. Like you could just throw the ball up in the air and he just boop. And it, it would be, it's but one thing that the only reason why I think that um, Austin Rivers' statement is half right is because of the NFL's physicality. And the way that these NBA players have been playing, where they just, you know, they flop and they, like, try to get themselves to go to the line after, like, something like this were to happen to them. Like, there's a whole pic... There's a picture of Embiid flopping after Carl Anthony Towns just puts his finger on it like this. And <laughs> I just thought it was really, really funny. But there is a graphic on that. You guys can go ahead and look that up. Well, there's a picture. You guys can go ahead and look it up if you want. But essentially, like, with the way that they act when something like that happens, imagine how they're going to act when somebody stiff arms them or with somebody, like, tackles them with their shoulder. I mean, granted, now the NFL is sort of like easing up on the is sort of easing up on the rules and mitigating tackles to the point where they just revamp tackles entirely. So maybe now with the revamp tackles, I mean, it's not really I don't even think it's tackling now. That maybe they could. I mean, cuz it is it the tackling rules in the NFL, they are a little bit they've become a little bit softer now with this new change with the NFL. If you guys are interested in listening to more about that change, why don't you guys go ahead and check out the GSMC football podcast where Kenneth is the host. He does a really good job in breaking down everything with um with football. We also have a chip shot football podcast as well, and I'm sure he was talking about the rule change in the in the NFL. Manny, he does the chip shot football podcast there's also jeremy who does the um who does another podcast on the show as well so go ahead and check out his podcast and tj as well who does the podcast directly after me he covers football as well and go ahead and check out their podcast see what they had to say about um the nfl and the and the hit drop tackles because i'm trying to focus more on basketball than i am about football even though this is a story about both and but 
that half of the statement where he says that you can put 30 NBA players into the NFL, I think that's sort of the I think that's the incorrect statement. Because because like I mean, you have a better chance that 30 NBA players will be able to succeed in the NFL compared to putting 30 NFL players in the NBA. That's for sure. But saying you can I don't think that's entirely true. So I don't agree with that first statement. But the second statement saying that you can't take 30 NFL players and put them in the NBA, I believe that is 100% true. Because of, and the big problem, and the big difference is the height difference. Because, like, again, imagine if Ty, imagine if you, like, put Tyreek Hill in an NBA game. He's, like, he's going to look like a, he's going to look like a toddler. I mean, he already looks, like, rather short compared to everybody else at the, um, everybody else that defends him in the NFL and, like, everybody else. Like, he does seem rather short. But then, ima- so imagine just how short he's going to look like in front, um, in front of, like, six-foot-four point guards or in front of Victor Wembenyama, of all people. Like, the, that's the only part of the statement for Austin that I genuinely agree on. However, there are clips of, like, um, these NBA players performing NFL feats with, with ease. Like, I saw DeMar DeRozan in a clip. He threw, like, a 60-yard bomb or like a 50 yard bomb like with the football and it was a it was a dot too like that was a very impressive throw and it was like it's it gives off the impression that NBA athletes like overall they are the best athletes because it's like they have the height they have the cardio they have the strength they have the footwork they have the hand eye coordination they have all of this granted you need all of that in every other sport I'm not saying that you don't need all of that in every other sport but it's really like the biggest difference is also the height and the fact that they're still as athletic and nimble with all that height. So that's that's all I really have to say about these comments and um, what Austin Rivers had to say, as well as like what I think. So I think he's half right. But with that, we are out of time for this third segment. So now I will go ahead and go into the fourth segment where we talk about Rookie of the Year. It was announced yesterday right after my show segment. And if you guys paid attention, I said we had to see if Victor Wembenyama won Defensive Player of the Year. And boom, NBA listened to me. So I will be right back after this short break to go ahead and talk about um, Defensive Player of the Year. Short break this time, I promise. For the best and latest podcasts available anywhere, go to the podcast app on your cell phone and type in GSMC to access free content-rich podcasts on health and wellness, book reviews, sports, entertainment, relationships, social media, movies, technology, finance, and even weird news. Subscribe and download the GSMC Podcast Network's family of shows available everywhere podcasts are found. 